Hi, so in this video, I want to talk about using named arguments for more Pythonic code. When we write a function in Python, we have the option of creating positional arguments as well as keyword only arguments. That's as developers of the function. And with newer versions of Python, we actually also have the ability to define positional only arguments for our functions, just like the built-ins used to be able to do for the longest of time, but we couldn't do it in user-defined you know, user callables. So this video is not about that. It's not about how we create positional arguments, keyword-only arguments, positional-only arguments. This is more about how, as developers, we can call these functions, and specifically, functions that have positional arguments. So let's take a look at an example. Let's go ahead and write a function. So my func will take in three arguments and they're defined as positional arguments. And I'm just gonna return an F string. So I'm gonna say A equals, B equals, and C equals, okay? So that's all my function does. So in this case, I've got three positional arguments, which means when we call the function, we can call it using positional arguments. So we can say my func, one, two, and three. And of course, one goes into A, two goes into B, and so on. But Python also allows us to pass these arguments as named arguments, even though the function doesn't define those as keyword-only arguments, and I'll show you in a sec how to do that. Even though it doesn't, it still gives me the option to call it that way. So now I can call it with A equals one, B equals two, and C equals three, like so. And you see, we get the same result. We can even pass just some of them by name and the others positionally. So maybe I'm gonna pass the first one by position and then I'm gonna pass the second one and the third one, but using the named variant, okay? I can do that as well. Now, the advantage of using named arguments is that we do not have to worry about the specific order in which the arguments have to be passed. So for example, I could write my func b equals two, c equals three, and a equals one. And you can see that I still end up with a equals one, b equals two, c equals three. The order in which I specify my arguments now does not matter because I'm naming them. And that's the key thing here. Now, that doesn't happen with positional arguments. If I pass my positional arguments in the wrong order, two, three, one, they end up in the wrong slots, right? In the wrong variables, A, B, and C. So the issue, as we are writing code that calls functions that have many arguments, is that if we pass those arguments positionally, we have to remember the specific order in which the arguments need to be passed. And this can easily lead to two things. Decreased productivity, because we've got to go back to our function definition to check every time what's the order in which I need to pass those things, or we've got to go back to the docs. It's very easy to introduce bugs into your application, and it actually makes your code less readable for someone else coming in, and I'll show you an example of that. So the more Pythonic way is that when you do have multiple arguments in a function, even though the function doesn't require you to pass those arguments by name, if it allows you to do so, if you've got multiple arguments and the order in which those arguments are passed to the function is meaningful, then you should use named arguments to call that function or to call that callable more generally. So one of my favorite examples, and if you've seen my videos in the past, you've seen it before, but I always like using longitude and latitude because it's, it's easy to confuse the two when you have a function that takes both, right? So if I've got this function here, and I'm just gonna have it return again an F string. So we'll do that, and then the latitude, like so. So now when I call this function, I will, as a de Python developer, I should call this function using named arguments. That's the more Pythonic way. I'm gonna pass in the longitude. I'm gonna say, hey, the longitude is 10, and the latitude is, let's say, negative three. So if I do that, you can see that it came back correctly. The longitude was 10, latitude was three. Now, if I had swapped these things around, let's do it this way. Let's go ahead and swap that around. You can see that I still end up with the correct values in the correct places. So that's the more Pythonic way. And in fact, somebody reading the code 
is going to have an easier time understanding what this does, what this is, what you're passing into the position function, because it's very explicit. The latitude is negative 3, the longitude is 10. If you just have code that calls it this way, first of all, you can make a mistake. You just passed in now negative 3, thinking it's the latitude, but of course it's not because longitude is the first positional argument. So you made a mistake as a developer and someone reading the code now doesn't know, well, is this one the latitude or this one the latitude? They know that position takes both, longitude and latitude, but they don't remember the order either. Now they got to go back and look at the documentation or look at your function and hunt that down, right? So the more Pythonic way, use named arguments. So one thing that I do as a developer of functions, let's say if I'm writing a function or I'm writing a class and I'm going to have other developers use it, or even myself, I will actually write my functions this way. I will actually do this. I will put this star in front. So I often get questions during code reviews, what's this? What does it do? Well, this basically means that every variable, every parameter that's defined after the star becomes a keyword only parameter, a keyword only argument, which means that when I call position, I can no longer call it using negative three and 10. I can no longer use positional arguments because there are no positional arguments to position, right? If we, we, you could define positional arguments first, right? And then say no more positional arguments and the rest has to be keyword only. I think people have seen that before, but they haven't seen the one where there's nothing in front of the star. And so they wonder, well, what does it do? Well, it does exactly this. It forces the caller to specify that this is the latitude and this is the longitude. Or maybe it was the other way around. I don't remember. But whichever way, now it forces the caller to explicitly state which is the longitude, which is the latitude. So why do I do this? Well, I do this to help other developers using my function decrease the odds of introducing a bug. And that's not purely altruistic because I don't want to be, you know, woken up three, you know, at three in the morning because the production system went down because somebody decided that they weren't going to use named arguments and they switched around two arguments in a function call. And then hunting that down isn't easy either. So it basically forces people to use the more Pythonic approach of named arguments. But in your cases, you are going to deal with functions that don't have this required, that don't force you to do that. It doesn't mean that you shouldn't do it. Use named arguments. It's a tiny bit of extra code that you got to type. It makes it much clearer, decreases the amount of possible bugs, and there's really practically no performance impact doing this. And you'll be a better programmer if you do that. That's it. Named arguments.